good evening. I was sitting there practicing my Australian accent in my head, but it didn't even go well in my head. Good evening and welcome to the 2019 Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Broward County kickoff event. My name is Michelle Alter and I am a breast cancer survivor. I am here today to share my personal story, thank you, with you and share with you why I do what I do and why I do it for the American Cancer Society. Before I start, I just have to say, I'm the fleet manager in a Lexus dealership, so I never really imagined myself in a Mercedes dealership. Back to my story. When I was diagnosed 18 years ago, I was 32 years old. For those of you trying to do the math in your head, I'm 29. I don't know the statistics from 18 years ago, but breast cancer was less common back then, especially for someone my age. Today, I believe it's one in eight women that are diagnosed. So at 32 years old, I felt alone. Occasionally, someone would say to me, I know someone who knows someone, maybe you should speak to them. But quite honestly, I had no interest in speaking to anyone. It was my battle, I was focused, and I was going to fight it with every fiber of my being. At one of my oncology appointments, which was at Holy Cross, by the way, I was given a flyer for an event called Look Good, Feel Better. I was intrigued and, I, and it was recommended that I attend. I was happy that I did. At the Look Good, Feel Better meeting, there were people there to help me and others just like me in the same situation. They gave us wigs, they had hairdressers there to cut and style them for us. There was a makeup artist there to show you how to apply eyebrows because guess what, when you don't have hair, you don't have eyebrows. How many of you know how to tie a scarf on your head? When you have no hair, that's crucial. This is just one of the programs offered by the American Cancer Society and just one of the reasons they will always have my support. Have you ever heard of a program called Reach for Recovery? Shortly after my diagnosis through the American Cancer Society, Reach for Recovery sent a breast cancer survivor to my home to meet with me and explain what to expect. What to expect before and after chemo, what to expect before and after surgery, and what to expect before and after radiation. I don't think I need to tell you what kind of peace of mind that gave me in the midst of a life crisis. It made the unbearable almost tolerable, and it allowed me to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I started doing Making Strides about 18 years ago. I am so very fortunate that my company, the Craig Zinn Automotive Group, has backed me up and sponsored this event for the last several years. It has allowed me to do what I do best every October. If you walk into my Lexus and Subaru Thumber Pine showrooms during the month of October, you will always see them decorated in pink. Obviously, this is a cause very near and dear to my heart and one that I am passionate about. Ten years ago, my mom was also diagnosed with this dreaded disease. I can honestly say that it was easier for me to deal with my own cancer than it was for me to deal with my mom's. Once we reached a point where we knew my mom was going to be okay, I was able to recognize the fruits of my labor. I was able to see the advancements in technology and in treatment from my diagnosis to my mom's. I was able to realize why I spend a couple of months every year asking everyone I know, friends and family, coworkers, acquaintances, to donate money to Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. At my dealership alone, collectively, we probably gain about 20 pounds every October from all the big sales that I orchestrate. <laughs> Unfortunately, bracket testing wasn't available when I was diagnosed, and I didn't find out until almost five years later that I carry the BRCA genetic mutation. Late last year, I made a decision to meet with a geneticist and discuss my risks and options. I learned that the older I get, the higher risk I become for breast cancer recurrence. After discussing my findings with my oncologist, I made a conscious decision to undergo a bilateral mastectomy and reconstruction. At this point, I am four surgeries in, in only five short months, with another couple of surgeries to go in my near future. I am beyond grateful for the most amazing team of doctors and for my surgeon who has pretty much held my hand on this chosen path. What I found out after my initial surgery in February, when the pathology report came back, was that I had cancer cells in both breasts. It was 100% confirmation that I made not only the right decision, but at the right time. Had I not opted for a bilateral mastectomy, it would have been just a matter of time until I was diagnosed with breast cancer again. My son, Max, who lifted his head up from the phone for a second, will turn 10 this year. I will do everything in my power so that breast cancer is not relevant in his adult life like it is in mine. I don't ever want him to have to hear from his friends or relatives 
that they were diagnosed with this disease. The moral to my story is this. Let's fundraise and support the American Cancer Society so they can keep these amazing programs alive and well. Let's support them so they can continue the research and find a cure. But most importantly, let's remain united and let's finish the fight. Thank you.